as soon as lockdown kicked in, a really weird thing happened to me, which was that quite suddenly I had absolutely no interest in either playing, writing or even listening to any music. It's as though my whole being suddenly needs to be completely recalibrated and the only sounds that I was interested in for pretty much two whole months were the sounds of nature. And I'm super lucky. I live on the coast by the sea, can see the sea out of that window and every day I just can listen to the birds and the trees and the wind and uh, the sound of the waves on the beach. And... Uh, after years and years of being on the road as a musician, there was this almost euphoria in, for the first time, being able to sleep as much as I wanted to and eat healthy food at times I wanted to. And um, along with this silence, it felt like my whole relationship with music was being reset, along with my physical body being healed. Of course, I've had to get practical, like pretty much all of my musician colleagues, all of my work vanished overnight along with the income stream. And I'm a freelance musician, so no furlough for me. And I found myself uh, rubbing out date after date in my analogue handwritten diary, a kind of anti-booking process as every single gig, um, lecture, rehearsal, festival, commission, everything vanished or was postponed indefinitely so um i had to get kind of i've had to get practical about cash and um, i started putting all of my energy into setting up a brand new business which is that of a healer i know um but actually it's something i've been practicing for over 20 years and have just never had time to make it official so i've got a new website set up i'm doing it online and it's gorgeous it's an ancient uh, Japanese uh, healing technique called Reiki and I'm teaching it as well. Anyway, don't worry, I'm not going to bang on about chakras because doing this new thing also it meant that music was humming along somewhere in the background inside my psyche and the first piece of music that I found myself able to listen to at this very, very strange time was Beethoven's Second Symphony, and it's from a, a new CD that's just launched with Tom Addis conducting the Britain Symphonia, um, playing uh, music of Beethoven and Barry. I didn't start with Gerald's music, but the Beethoven, wow, suddenly I could feel this sort of manic intensity of the composer himself, this sort of great, huge life force springing, springing onto, onto the page, onto the music. It's as though he was sitting there right next to me, banging away on the piano. This symphony, which was somehow translated onto the orchestra, and Addis has got such a profound understanding of musical architecture that you could hear the harmonic points, the way that it's put together, and then these sudden harmonic elisions into harmonic hyperspace. It was an incredible thing. And uh, after that, I cautiously have started exploring Ramo operas, this beautiful arias, the heavenly melody, um, underpinned by this poignant, pungent harmony. And then Couperin uh, keyboard music, this music that comes from so deeply within, um, the music of such grace and elegance and intelligence and integrity, um, amazing thing to reconnect with this music through time over the centuries. It felt so present and also Bach. But I haven't, I confess, been listening to much of the music of our own time. This commission, the Zeitgeist Commission, has come at the most amazing time because it has prompted me to re-engage with myself creatively from out of this strange state. And the inspiration for the piece called Salamander is, uh, was one day I was walking along the beach and the waves were huge. It was a really roiling, blustery day. The sun was incredibly brilliant. The waves were sparkling and they looked like one of those Hokusai woodcuts, uh, all golden section waves. And I suddenly started thinking of Triton rising from the depths of the ocean, one of the ocean gods, carrying his trident and uh, covered in seaweed and blowing his conch shell. Or 
bassoon <laughs> because this little piece is written for Ruth Rosales, Riot Ensemble's fabulous bassoon player. And uh, Triton in French means salamander, which, as you know, is an amphibian. But it is also a mythical creature that was said to withstand fire. And the uh, properties of the salamander is that it can withstand uh, uh, huge transformative events and emerge unscathed into a new light. And if that isn't a metaphor for COVID, I don't know what is. So working title of the piece I haven't quite been able to let go of is FAG 19. And there are 19 pitches, a uh, little row that start and finish the piece, which implies a, applies a recurring cycle, which is surely what civilizations have always done with their disasters and their rebirths. And the piece is a mini triptych. And the central part of it is called Triton's Song and is inspired by a friend of mine who I met here, um, who is an incredible sound healer. He's called Russell Penn. And he uses his superhumanly beautiful voice to work with his clients. And he uses this uh, beautiful, melodic sound of his voice combined with overtone singing. So you can hear all the high partials. And uh, it's an incredible experience. If any of you are ever in St. Leonard's on Sea, go and check him out. It's amazing. But it was very much his sound that has informed uh, the, uh, the, uh, the central section of this piece. Salamander handily contains a little musical code. In solfege language, sa is F sharp, la is A, ma is E flat. Um, nice little triad there, diminished triad, which also contains within it, guess what? A tritone. I love it when those things work out. Anyway, it's been huge fun to write it. And I am so, so grateful uh, for this commission. It really has got me started again in a, in a new way. What would I like uh, for me in the future as a composer? Well, you know what? What I've always wanted with anything that I do is to do more and get better the end. And um, I think one thing that has come out of lockdown is that we've all had to tech up like crazy. And we've seen that it is possible to present music in an online format. Of course, it's never going to be the same as if you're physically present with the musicians. But nevertheless, as the technology gets better, as we get more and more sophisticated with high definition video and audio recordings, then I like to think that more of this art music that we love can be communicated to audiences on a much bigger scale. Audiences who surely, after all this time within, surely they're gonna be hungry for something that has got real content. Well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> 